hey, I kind of like this. I've always wanted to be on TV. <laughs> Hi, folks. I'm John Zadar, your host. This is On Top and Hot. It is Wednesday, June 29th. Now, what I do on this show is I focus in on OTC and penny stocks that are catching attention from the investors or jumping and bumping on the charts. These are stocks you should be paying attention to. Now, a penny stock and an OTC stock are not necessarily the same. A penny stock is any stock under $5. They could be on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, as well as the OTC market. Now, me, I'm kind of hoping the ones I'm trading are on the major exchanges because they're free. You don't have to pay anybody to trade those stocks. I don't know of any brokers that are still charging for the major exchanges, but to find brokers that are not charging for OTC, yes, that's a different story. But in saying that, I got two for you. Weeble. Weeble has just started selling OTC stocks without transaction fees. I do believe I'm correct there. And you get a free trading platform, a real nice one. You got to learn it, but it's nice. The other one is Trading Aries, a brand new broker that's just gotten out there a few months ago. Uh, Aries, A-R-I-E-S, like the Ram, Aries. So we're going to be doing our due diligence on these stocks over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do any research on an OTC stock because I hate wasting time. Oh, I hate it. And folks, I look at a lot of stocks. So if I'm over there at Google doing all my searching, I'm seeing 10, 20, 30 times more information than I need to be looking at. And that is wasting time and really frustrating me. So I just come here and I get it right the first time. How much easier can it be? Let's take a look at how the OTC market fared today. I would like to tell you it fared well, but it didn't. Every number dropped today. Our dollar volume has been really strong. At the beginning of the week, we were at 2.5 billion Monday and Tuesday. Our average is 2.1. We rarely get off of that. We didn't just lose our gains. We fell below our average today, 1.9 billion. Our trades, that too has been falling all week. We started off at 304,000 on Monday, 299 on Tuesday. Today, we're about 50,000, even lower than that. But this is the sad news right there, our share volume. About a year ago, we were at 40, 45 billion shares, roughly a day. Today, we did 8.7. Yesterday, 10.2. That's a drop. The day before, 11.2. Another drop. So we've been falling all this week. Now, we have been falling well over a year. And it was about three weeks ago on a Thursday, we hit 4.7 billion. That was the floor. I say that because we had 10, 11 days of rising after the 4.7 until this week. So hopefully this is just a law and we're going to get back to climbing because we need our volume back. All right, we're going to go take a look at those stocks that I've gathered up to share with you today. We're going to focus in on three, and then i got a few others I'm going to brush over just so you're aware they're there. Let's go. Our first stock here definitely deserves some applause. I think so. This is WNFT Worldwide NFT Inc. This is a debut stock. They claim to be the first pure play NFT stock on the market, and they may well be. Now, this is the first day WNFT has been on the market. However, it's not the first day for the company. This used to be Golf Core, ticker G-O-F-F. -F. They just had the name and the ticker changed today, as George Sharp told everybody. That's right. It's a George Sharp play. You don't know who George Sharp is? Well, right now, he has become the president. That just happened a little while ago, but he wasn't always the president. He was the custodian. You see, George Sharp is an investor. He saves dead companies. He resurrects them so that he can make a profit. He identifies companies where the management has abandoned them. They may still be on the open market selling, but there's nobody there. And if there's nobody there, there's no one to file. And when they aren't filing, you get pulled off the open market. Now, you're not delisted immediately. You're put into the expert market. This gives you time to get your filings caught up, and then you come back onto the open market. But if there's no management, there's no one there to file to get you back out. So he identifies these companies, approaches the courts, requests custodialship. It's not ownership, it's custodialship. He's going to take care of it and fix it. If nobody fights against him, it's granted. Now, it's his responsibility to get this company clean. Whatever he discovers, he has to fix it up at his expense. He's got to get the company pink, and then 
for his own sake, he's got to go make a deal and find a reverse merger so he can get paid back everything he's invested and make some profit. So he's not just a president. He is an investor in this company just like anybody else is. So this company has got a lot going on and most of it can be covered in a tweet we have over here. Check this out. WNFT, formerly GOFF, started the day at 18 cents and went to 45 cents, now sitting at 33 after the forward split. We are now up over 85% on the day and at the peak we were up 150. Merger hasn't even been revealed yet. This is just free money as people buy the cheaper shares. And that's all they're doing, folks. They're slapping it. Look, the price is up here. It falls. It just looks too good to be true. You look out there. You don't see any bad news. You're not really doing deep DD, so you don't know everything that's going on. It's just like, well, holy cow. So it starts to run, and it falls. Well, what's all that? All that recovery right there, because this is what the stock was worth. That is what it's worth. That is value. It doesn't matter how many shares there are, right? This is what the company's worth to the investors. So they're going to push this price all the way back up to there. And we're all the way down there. There's lots of pie to still eat. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Not very much. Like I said, they're normally doing 661,000 shares a day. Today she did 1.5 million. But I expect this to pick up a little bit. I do. Share structure. What do we have for a float? We got 177 million in the float. I always go to the unrestricted shares. I think that's as close as you're going to get. They may list a float wherever you're at, but I find in most cases it's either outdated or it's just wrong. So I just go to unrestricted shares. That is pretty much on target. Financials. We got nothing. Disclosures, well, they've got their financials, and there is information in there about how George Sharp has been working with this company, if you want to jump in there and see what he's done and what he's doing. But there isn't any mention of the company, of who they're doing a reverse merger with or an acquisition, who they're going to make the deal with, which is the next pin to fall over. We've got everything else going on right now, so that's what we're waiting for. But there is still profits to be taken right now, as far as I'm concerned. Let me show them to you better on the chart. We're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform. That's Thinkorswim. And I got mine over at TD Ameritrade. You just sign up for a free trading account. No money down. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and they give you a free trading platform to use. Can't beat that, can you? Wow. So we are looking at WNFT. But to do this on charts, we have to look at both tickers. Because they only show you the time that ticker's been on the market. WNFT has only been on the market one day. So that is all we have is one day of charting. To see our history, we have to look at GOFF. So we are looking at the six month, four hour chart. We have a high bubble here of 76 cents and no low bubble forward. No, the only low is behind her. This has been climbing all of this time. You can see that easy peasy. And even when she did take a big dip down below the 200, she came right back up. From where she fell. Technicals at this point in time, and this is one day shy, this is missing a day. These technicals look strong, but they really don't matter because things changed when the forward split occurred. It's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. All right, I want to open this up because this kind of puts things in perspective. So here we are up here at about uh, 60 cents, 58 cents roughly. Took this big fall, and it took many days to do it, four or five days. She hit this low bubble and then took another five, six days to climb up to normal, right back to where she fell from. And then she started to fall and the day ended. And then we see she opens up down here. Now it says 19 cents uh, in the tweet. He said 18 cents, but either way, we're right there. It didn't fall down to this price. That's the reverse split. When everybody got their extra shares, you had to pull the price down. So everybody sees this super duper low price and they see this. I mean, it's lower than 34 cents, right? We're now down, let's get a line down here. We're right here. Everybody sees the price down here. That was a low it bounced off of. What do you think's gonna happen when people see this low? 
A lot of people aren't going to do their due diligence, folks. A lot of people aren't going to know there was a forward split because it was only a three. It wasn't a massive one like 500 or 30 where you have this humongous change in price. That just looks like a hard dip. So you're going to have a lot of investors just buying this because it's on a low bubble and that's going to pull it up. Then you've got the people who are in the stock who see the value already. They know the value of it and they're willing to put it right back up there. So everybody sees this as a bargain price. So if we're down here, right there, and we've got to bring this all the way back up to there, that's going to give you at least, well, it's actually closer to 80% gains. In either case, there's at least 50% gains there getting back up to normal. So I really like Goff, which is now WNFT, but we're also waiting for more news from George Sharp. Now that he's got his name, maybe he'll come out with a teaser, a tweet, even a PR about who they're buying or who they're looking at or who's going to take over. That's the next thing we need. All right, let's take a look at that next stock. We're now focusing in on ticker EMGE, Emergent Health Corps. Boy, was she on fire today. She finished the day at 0 0.0239 with only 198% gains. It was even higher. She's on the pink tier in current, and she has both of her green ticks I tell you to look for, so she looks good. Now, as you would expect, Emergent Health is in the health sector, but they don't have anything FDA approved, but they are into a lot of different sorts of things, and I can't cover it all, but let me give you an idea here of what we're talking about. Emergent believes it is positioning itself as a leader in the field of regenerative medicine defined by the National Institute of Health using nutritionally designed products. Emergent is focusing current efforts on marketing licensed, patent-pending natural stem cell mobilizing agents capable of enhancing each individual's ability to mobilize their own adult stem cells from their bone marrow. Wow! Emergent is also licensed under a patent pending application to market a dual acting all natural diet aid designed to help control hunger through normal body signals to the brain and stomach. So they've got a lot going on there. They're even working with stuff for pets as well. Now they had news today. It was good news obviously and there was a lot of excitement around this company. Relative volume, she normally does about a half a million shares. Today she did over 18 and a half million. So you're looking at 36, 37 times her normal volume. Share structure. We got a low float, folks. Woohoo! We have 25 million in the float. It's not a super duper low float, but that is an excellent float. I really like that. Financials. Are they making any money? Uh, not last year. They were for the years before. How about quarterly? All right, they've started making some money. It's not very much. They tell us to take three zeros and to put those behind here. So they made $14,000 last uh, quarter. Yeah, the quarter ending in March, they had to pay $4,000 out of that and they got to keep $9,000. So hopefully this uh, news that came out today is gonna affect their revenues. It looks like they need some help here. Disclosures. We know all their financials are on time because they're current and nothing down here since 2021. So let's run on over here to the news. So they've got news here. It goes all the way back to 2016. What do we got for 2022? We've got actually most of it here is for 2022 and it is about the anti-aging market. But the news that came out today, Emergent Health executes binding letter of intent to acquire Fusion Specialty Pharmacy. They tell us that the company executed the binding letter of intent to acquire Fusion Special Pharmacy subject to financing and execution of certain definitive agreements. Fusion generated almost $4 million last year, an approximate 100% increase from the year before. So they're starting to kick some butt. The acquisition is projected to close during the third quarter of this year. So we're in the second quarter. Third quarter is about ready to approach us. They've got more information here that you can zoom in on, but that is your catalyst, folks. So let's go see how high this stock actually got today, and is there any more it can give? We are looking at EMGE, six month, four hour chart as usual. We got a high bubble back here of just under seven cents and a low bubble just under a half a penny. 
She has had a hard fall for a long time and has been going sideways with little dips here and there until today. Volume we had in the middle of the year, but not much here recently until today. Today's news really tore it up. However, the technicals are now pulling back and cooling off. But look at that volume. Most volume it had had over the last six months. 20 day, one hour view. So you can see these little itty bitty tiny bars, not a lot of activity, slowly creeping over the orange 20 day SMA, got on top of the 50, notice the bars are getting a little bit bigger, and then the news came out. But she was sitting solid on the 50, so she was in a good place. And she jumped from 0085 up to just about 4 cents. 0085. So you're talking 85 to 392 is what you're talking about. So you're talking over 300%. Yeah, she was well over 300% at her high today. And she has fallen back to almost 200%. And was that 50% of her gains? I like to draw a line at the bottom of the surge and at the top of the surge and then split it in the middle. You can eyeball it or you can do it with the math. So we are a little bit below the 50% mark. That is, it went up and threw away 50% of its gains and we are left with less than 50% right now. However, it's sitting right on top of the 10 on the 20 day. Technicals aren't bad. Technicals are actually pretty warm right here. Looking at that five day, five minute. All right, you can see she is actually right on it. Right on the 50 line. Now that's what I'm looking for. I don't care if it's on top sitting like a king or hanging like a monkey underneath. As long as it is somewhere right on this line, I'm a happy camper because I feel confident. If it's gonna keep 50% of its gains, there's a very strong likelihood it'll stay in this region or start climbing. And both are good to me. Our technicals right now on the five minute. We do have a crossover and are approaching the signal line. We're midtown on our RSI. We are at the top of our CCI, which is good, but she is pointing down. She is sitting on the 20 day right now and the 50 just came into play. Now You may want to consider that because a lot of these prices will gravitate to that new SMA when it gets there because traders start trading to it. The stronger the SMA, the more data you have. So you may see this just actually push up to here. And if it gets up to there, it may just be a, a good primer to get it running. So I'd be watching EMGE, but do a little more DD. See what you think about it. They got a lot going on. All right, the last stock we're taking a look at is KRFG King Resources. This has been running for days, since the 21st. They had a filing come out, and that's it. There's no news today, no filings, no tweets, nothing else, and it is still running, and it's the 29th, right? She finished the day at 0035 with only 25% gains today. She's on the pink tier and current, and she has both of those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Now, they tell us over here that the company is from Hong Kong. And because I couldn't get any idea of what it is they do, I went and jumped into their most recent financial. Let me zoom on up there. Now, I got some good information here, but a little confusing, but I think it's because of the way the company is set up. They tell us here we are not a Hong Kong operating company, but a Delaware holding company with operations conducted through our wholly owned subsidiaries, which are based in Hong Kong and the British Virgin Islands. We currently operate in Hong Kong, and we intend to expand our distribution of products into China and other Asia markets as opportunities permit. All right, I get all that. Then we got a line of information down here. King Resources Inc. is a Delaware Holdings company with no operations of its own. Now they make it sound like from what I'm reading here, the subsidiaries have operations, but this King Resources does not, which is a little bit confusing. They say that King Resources is permitted by law to fund the subsidiaries, but they tell us down here they don't plan on doing that. All right, then I scroll down a little bit further to learn what it is they do. And it turns out that they work with electric chargers and transformers. Currently, all of our revenue are derived from solution services that we provide to other companies. We are currently preparing trial sales of our 65 watt AC DC type charger, our USB C multi port hub, and blah, blah, blah. They got lots of different products here, and that's what they're working with chargers and transformers. 
So, what was the relative volume around the company today? Not bad. She jumped from 18 million to 88 million, looking at four to 500 percent increase in volume. Share structure. Oh, really bad. <laughs> Although some folks on Twitter are going to tell you that's a low float. I don't qualify a billion shares as a low float, and that's what we've got there. Financials. Well, they are making some money. They are making $385,000 as of this year, $334 full last year. So it looks like they're actually picking up some momentum here. They're doubling, doubling, tripling. So they are making more money. What are the disclosures? Anything new? Financials are current. We know that. And the 10K, which came out the 24th, that is the financial I was just reading. And there's a lot of information in there. If you really want to know about this company, that's where the information is, right here. Don't go do no Google search. You're not going to find it. This 8K, though, that is the catalyst. Let's jump into this. We don't have to read much. King Resources, Inc., a Delaware corporation, entered into an equity purchase agreement with Williamsburg Venture Holdings, a Nevada limited liability company. They're the investor. Pursuant to which the investor agreed to invest up to $20 million into the company. Now they go on to explain how this is all going to be broke down with shares and how much he's got to be paying for the shares. But that's the big news. They've got $20 million that somebody's investing into the company. And I don't know how they're going to put it to use. Maybe some more information is out there and available. But that is all there is. And this company is running. So let's go take a look at that chart and I'll show you what I'm talking about. That is a six month, four hour chart for KRFG. Got a high bubble of almost two cents and a low bubble of triple zero nine. And right now we're at double zero three five. She's been under the 200, fell real hard, sideways, another big dip, and then a lot of sideways here. And then it looks like she just got tired of going sideways. She not only broke the 200, she steamed way above it and is floating up there right now. Volume is incredible. She's had volume, but right now that is solidly packed. Technicals have been strong over the last few days, but they are cooling off right now. On our 20 day, we see we had a jump back here, oh, about 18 days ago. That was starting at 001 and went to 0021. So that was over 100% gains. Has been going sideways, and today it took off again off of that 0011 up to 51. So call that 11 to 51. 44 would be 400% gains. So we are looking at 450% gains in three days. She kind of went sideways. After that, fell hard yesterday and jumped. Technicals, nothing to brag about on the hour. Five minute, five day. There's your nice climb. There's our sideways day. There's our fall. And she has bounced off of the 200 haul here. And she's come back up to even, right? She's right back up here to even with everything else. And now she's falling again. So first off, I do expect her to come back to even. There's just a lot of excitement around this company right now, and I'm sure some kind of news is going to come out to tell us what they're going to do with that $20 million. I do see a crossover that looks like it's attempting to be made. RSI is pulling back. CCI is pulling back. It doesn't look too great there. Now, I want to jump back and get us one more support. See where this is going. All right, so right up in this area here, you can see how all of this is sitting on that all the way across. So we're right there. She's right up underneath that area, but she's falling back all the way back to here. She's trying to fill that gap. There's not a whole lot of steps to sit on here. You want some place where a lot of prices have set. Once she gets to this one, she'll probably get up to there. So let's come in on that five minutes, see what we got going on. So from 0036, I anticipate her to go to 0046. That is about 20%. Then to 005 and push all the way up here to somewhere near 006364. That's the way it looks. These would be the targets to get out on this as she's climbing. Watching your technicals to see if she starts to pull back. All right. Now let me show you some stocks that I didn't show you. I just want to briefly cover what they got going for them so that you can do more DD if you want to. Matter of fact, let's just start right here. I've got a few of them here that just have technicals that you need to be aware of. 
So we're taking a look here at ELMWQ. This is electric glass mouse solutions. That Q on the very end, that represents that it is going bankrupt. This was on the NASDAQ, it got pulled off, thrown down to the OTC. This is the entire chart since it's been on the OTC. This is a bounce play. You see this bottom line here, you can see most of the time she hits right there. Sometimes she comes a little lower, but most of the time she's right there. I've just taken an average. This is an average of where she comes up to. Obviously, she goes higher. There's no doubt about that, but that's an average. Every time she comes down to this low, at least, she bounces right back up. Do you know how big that bounce is? That is over 300% bounce. That little area, it is going from double zero three to over a penny. So that is over 300%. So right now she's at the top. Wait for her to come down. Buy her down here. Watch her bounce back up. Cha-ching. Next one we got. I just threw this one on here because I saw it at the very end of the day go crazy. Now I'm just jumping back to the four hour. You can see we had a big jump here and she's not done a whole lot, but that's a, that's a pretty big spike considering what's here. But today, at the end of the day, she just started, I mean, she was climbing, but then she launched. I mean, just a huge launch. I did not have any time to check into this. I don't know what's going on. Looks like she had a hard fall here and she's all the way back down here. But whatever this was, whatever this was at uh, 3.30, 3.30 in the afternoon for ticker ADTX, something definitely got it hot. It has fallen down below where it started the launch. It could launch again. Technicals all look like she's trying to reset up. The last ticker that we're going to look at on the charts for technicals is TXTM. Do you recognize that ticker? You probably should. TXTM is uh, Protex Mobility. They're the ones that did the deal with South Africa medicinal marijuana. And they did that a while ago. We had a huge jump on it. It has fallen down hard, had another recovery, fallen again, and is starting to push back up. I am just telling you to watch this. More information is probably going to be coming out, and it's already got a following. Folks, the first week that this company made the deal and it was running here, they did 10,000 plus trades. It, one of those days, 1 16th of all the shares on the OTC, that, that 8.2 billion or whatever it was, 1 16th of it was all theirs. Out of 12,000 different companies, they had 1 16th of every share sold. All right, let's take a quick look at a couple more I've got, and then we are done. Ah, I've only got one stock left to show you, but it is unique. It's kind of strange. It hasn't got any real catalyst right now. There's no news, there's no tweets, there's no filings, but something definitely has happened. This is Mobile Lads, ticker M-O-B-O. Now, if you go do any research like I was doing, trying to figure out what's going on, be very careful. The words mobile lads are bringing up some unuser friendly results, so be careful. So this is a psychedelic medicine company, and I couldn't find any information except that they have changed their share structure. Check this out. They have dropped everything drastically. I don't understand what's going on, but I'm going to keep my eye on them. Their authorized shares, they threw away 940 million shares. Authorized is how many shares they have in the bank, how many they can sell, how many they can use to make deals. They've only got 10 million now. That's not a lot. Their outstanding shares, they're dropping down to a million. And I see down here unrestricted shares, zero. Zero, there's no insiders owning any shares. I don't get it. And our float is down to 1 million. From 180 million, they dropped it down to a million. This is a psychedelic company. Psychedelic medicines are going to be big, probably bigger than cannabis because you can charge a lot more for a few, few molecules than you can for a whole bag of marijuana. So I expect psychedelics to be big. And with a million in the float, when this stock starts to move, it's going to move fast and hard and really high. So I thought you might be interested in seeing what's up with MOBO. 
You know the best thing about trading is every day is different than the day before. They're all unique. And we're finding different plays in different areas for different reasons. You've got to keep your eye on them, folks. DD is the magic here. I try to share a lot of information with you. I want to give you more than just three stocks. So hopefully, in all the information I put out there today, you found something that you're going to follow up on. Hopefully, it puts some money in your pocket, too. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.